Hence, leading to first of all ischemia of the organ to which the artery was supplying blood, and secondly, it results in hemorrhage. The pathogenesis of polyarteritis nodosa is rather unknown for cutaneous and classical polyarteritis nodosa, but in almost 30% cases of polyarteritis nodosa, the disease is associated with chronic hepatitis B virus infection. In such case, there is production of hepatitis B surface antigen by the virus, which leads to formation of antigen antibody complexes, and these complexes deposit in the blood vessels, most commonly in the visceral region. These immune complexes recruit inflammatory cells, causing inflammation of the blood vessels, known as vasculitis or polyarteritis nodosa. The disease affects only part of the vessel circumference. most commonly at the branching points resulting in weakening of the arterial wall and there might also be aneurysm at the site of vasculitis the histological picture is further subdivided into three phases the first of all is the acute stage in acute stage there is transmural inflammation of the vessel wall transmural means involving full thickness of the blood vessel wall so there is presence of multiple inflammatory cells such as neutrophils eosinophils and mononuclear cells inflammation goes hand in hand with the fibrinoid necrosis of the tunica media which is very small and limited in acute stage fibrinoid necrosis means the necrosis of medial cells resulting in fibrosis fibrinoid necrosis is most commonly associated with the injury associated with the immune mediated diseases the second stage is healing stage in which the inflammatory exudate is composed of macrophages lymphocytes and plasma cells in acute phase these were neutrophils eosinophils and mononuclear cells but now there are only the mononuclear cells the fibrinoid necrosis continues to increase in size due to increased necrosis the third stage is healed stage in healed stage there is thickening of the arterial wall due to excessive fibrosis or fibrinoid necrosis and there is loss of elastic lamina as well occasionally there might be thrombus in the lumen This is the histological picture of the artery affected by polyarteritis nodosa. This here is the affected region with the presence of inflammatory cells, excessive fibrosis and almost transmural damage. The acute stage and healed stage are present in multiple segments at the same time in the same arterial biopsy segment indicating inflammation and healing cycles. Polyarteritis nodosa typically occurs in all ages. but most commonly affected ages 40 to 45 years the disease presents with vague symptoms of fever myalgia arthralgia and weight loss myalgia means muscle pain and arthralgia means joint pain the disease is typically characterized by the multi systemic involvement and there is hypertension in case of renal artery involvement and there is abdominal pain associated with melena in case of intestinal arteries involvement a palpable purpura or rash might also be present on the skin in cutaneous polyarteritis nodosa the diagnosis is established on basis of clinical signs raised erythrocyte sedimentation rate and angiography denotes narrowing of blood vessel and there might also be aneurysm present in the affected blood vessel the treatment is with oral steroids such as prednisolone and immunosuppressants including methotrexate and cyclophosphamide In the suspicion of polyarteritis nodosa the patient is also evaluated for hepatitis B virus infection since in 30% of the cases of polyarteritis nodosa there is presence of chronic hepatitis B virus infection so this brings us to the end of discussion about polyarteritis nodosa 
If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.